the <coughs> area. What are, with the normalization relations between the United States and Cuba, what are going to be the policy implications for the rest of the Latin American countries, including Venezuela? It's a very good question. <coughs> it's good that uh, Professor Jolie mentioned Venezuela friends. I, mean, I mentioned to you that for a long time, the biggest supporter, especially in economic terms, was the Soviet Union. But the Soviet help suddenly dried up in 1990, and Cuba faced enormous difficulties. And then one country that came to the aid of Cuba was Venezuela, under Hugo Chavez. Another revolutionary, somewhat of a maverick, but again someone who stood up to pressures from the United States. Venezuela supplied oil at concessional rates to Cuba and helped Cuba to some extent overcome the difficulties. But, and this is interesting, they learned an important lesson from history and that is not to depend on any outside country too much. And this is what Raul Castro, you know, Raul Castro is a very pragmatic leader. I mentioned to you that he is trying to bring about many economic reforms and this is what Raul Castro said, that the construction of a new, new society from an econo economic point of view is, in my modest opinion, also a journey into the unknown, the undiscovered. We do not intend to copy from anyone again. You know, one of the mistakes they made was to copy the Soviet model. And subsequently, <coughs> not so much the Venezuelan model, but they did depend on Venezuela for quite some time. We do not intend to copy from anyone again. That brought about enough problems for us Copying others brought enough problems for us because in addition to that, many a time we also copied badly. <laughs> so, Latin America, the <clears throat> Latin America frames is another, another part of the world that is coming up economically and in other indices of development very rapidly. There is a lot of economic integration taking place within, among Latin American countries. And I would say that President Obama has understood the importance of Latin America for the prosperity of the United States itself. So one reason why he chose to normalize relations with, with Cuba is because by doing this, USA's relations with Latin America would become stronger. And this, I think, is a, is a good development. And we should look at Latin America, you know, with a new perspective. We have neglected, India has neglected Latin America. Latin America, we think, is too far away. There is very little economic cooperation even between Brazil and India, although it is slowly growing. But we must improve our relations, especially because China, you know, is, is, it has strengthened its economic ties with Latin America to such an extent that it has scared, it has begun to scare America. I'll give you an example. I mentioned to you that uh, on our way back, you know, from, from Cuba, on our way back to India, we went to Panama and we stayed three days in Panama. We went to visit the Panama Canal, the famous Panama Canal. But we learned that now China is investing in Nicaragua, the neighboring Nicaragua, to build another canal which is going to be three times bigger than 
Panama Canal. That is the level of engagement and investment that China is having in Latin America. So, you know, on some other occasion, we should have a discussion only on India and Latin America. Yes, Professor Jos. <coughs> Inspiring presentation on Cuba. I will say just taken back to me very inspiring columns in Netflix. Weekly, Adam Saina, which are very inspiring. And uh, I think that uh, that's going back. I wish that uh, going back. So I am related to that question. The Cuba, this victory, this has something to do with the ideology and commitment. So with the social experiment was the experiment that was failed. You also said before this thing. But the experiment failed because it was uh, different reasons. And the experiment also should be tried in different countries, different ways. That also you agree with Venezuela, so we should not copy that. Each one should come. Irrespective of all uh, these things, the Soviet, uh, Cuban doctors bombing going there, interior parts of uh, Brazil or Africa or other these things, and all of them also with their government employees, with the commitment, inspiration, that also speaks about the strength of the ideology and Marxism. And that's the way they are committed, irrespective of all these things. But that weapon they have, and the relatively better they used it, other places they stand. But that inspiration, that is the inspiration which we need, and look forward to that. Others say alternative, we are coming to capitalism, this thing and all. Whether this also shows that this idea of this thing have a feature, with a commitment, this is a proper uh, 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 commitment can go ahead. And also I feel that uh, you will go back to your anger, with this experience, go back to your anger, uh, this uh, uh, inspired left ideologies. I am a spark in that. I wish and saw that uh, you are paying the path for that. Uh, we shall take a I'll just question. answer this one and then. Uh, friends, whether this is a, a victory for Marxist ideology, I doubt. There is, a, you know, this is an idea, this is a victory for humanist ideology. And there is a, you know, humanist core even in Marxism. But the, this is not a victory for the economic theory of Marxism. Because all that is happening in America, you know, in, in Cuba is in some way correcting the mistakes by following that ideology. Let me give another very important uh, uh, dimension to what is happening in Cuba. You know, many factors have contributed to the normalization of relations between Cuba and the United States. But there was one somewhat invisible hand behind the handshake between Obama and Raul Castro. And that invisible hand was Pope Francis. Hmm? Pope Francis and his intermediaries, they made a very important contribution to initiating a quiet dialogue between Washington and Havana. You know, uh, when we were in Havana, our guide and driver was a black Cuban, Marcelino. And Marcelino, I used to have a lot of chat. So he, I asked him, how did this change come about? And he told me, saying that Fidel, in the early 1970s, had predicted that relations between Cuba and the United States would get normalized only when there is a Latin Pope and a black American president. <laughs> a Latin Pope and a black American president. Now, this may or may not be true, but it is widely believed in, America, you know, in Cuba that Pope has made a contribution, and indeed Pope has made a contribution. You know, in May this, this year, Raul Castro, for the first time, he visited the Vatican to thank Pope Francis and he said that Pope, I am inspired by Pope Francis. And he said that I would like to go back to the church. Hmm? Other churches 
Hmm? And uh, churches, you know, in, for many, for, for a long time, these churches were converted into uh, performance uh, spaces, etc. But you know, the one good thing is that they never forcibly tried to eradicate religion. That mistake they did not commit. But now, you know, an enlightened pope like Pope Francis, he has made a contribution. So it's a. It's not entirely the, the victory of one ideology. I think a lot of good positive factors have played their role. Yes. I have two questions here. One related to the economic uh, part that uh, Cuba, as you mentioned, has been dependent on foreign aid uh, for its survival, basically. First from USSR and then from Venezuela. So how do you expect it to, what are the areas where Cuba can stand on its own. The only two, three products one knows are famous for Cuban exports are the Havana's, the cigars and the sugar. sugar, 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 sugar. 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 These are the two and maybe the liquor few things. But uh, is there uh, any other way apart from this uh, medical uh, export to the government? That is the first Second, for India, is such a insignificant small and distant state for us. What meaning does it have to India-Cuba relations? Earlier I could understand in the, uh, Cold, the height of Cold War and the uh, non-aligned movement. Now with the death of the Cold War and uh, therefore the death or demise of the non-aligned movement also, uh, what is the significance left for India and Cuba now? Okay, we uh, shall take a couple of questions okay. and then, you know, uh, Sanjay. So Obama and Castro handshake is considered as an uh, important event, but is it reinforcing the fact or debate of end of ideology, or is it the dominance of a religion? Yes, last one. Uh, Mr. Kutani, thank you for your talk. Uh, my question is not highly centered on Cuba per se, but uh, more on the analytical paradigm described by IR theory. Uh, you gave various reasons as to uh, why this seminal transformation has occurred between the United States and Cuba. Um, a systemic level analyst would say that the change is attributed to uh, the pressure put by other Latin American countries that you spoke of it. A sub-systemic level um, analyst would say maybe it's a diaspora pressure on the American administration. A personality level analyst would say it's the personal uh, cognizance of Obama or the pragmatism of the cash flows. Um, my question to you is, if I were to ask you to pinpoint on one of these level of um, analysis, would you be able to put your finger on one of them? Or are you an analyst who believes that um, IR uh, foreign policy analysis is not that black and white, and the truth maybe lies somewhere in the Thank you. Shall we take this yeah. first? Total question. Ah, yeah. Gender parity, guy, the observations. Gender parity, observations on gender parity. Uh, you know, your questions, Cuba you know, has a small population, one, uh, 11 point two, now about 12 million, a small population and the kind of resources they have, you know, they will most certainly become a prosperous nation, especially with the lifting of the economic embargo, which is now a matter of time. So once economic relations between America, United States and Cuba improve, there is going to be a boom in business, investment. It is now the responsibility of the Cuban leadership to ensure that with prosperity, the society does not become more unequal, more divided between rich and poor. That is the responsibility of the Cuban leadership. But there is no doubt whatsoever that Cuba will become a prosperous nation. And there are some analysts you know, who are saying that uh, Cuba will become the Singapore of that part of the world. Tourism alone will be a big, you know, a big source of uh, prosperity for, for Cuba. 
apart from other things you know they are very strong in areas like biotechnology yeah. biotech one of the world leaders in biotechnology so human capital is their is their big strength and any nation that takes care of its human capital you know with some effort good policies good governance you know cuba will boom now what is you know cuba is small country what why is so important for india my answer to that is that cuba in some ways is our gateway to latin america because cuba in spite of being small has somehow managed to establish very close relations with all latin american countries you know it is you know it is every country in the world barring the united states which also now will have a has a very strong diplomatic presence in cuba you know cuba's great achievement it's one of its great achievements is that in spite of being small it uh, managed to have a very large international profile so fidel castro was a world figure even raul castro in some way has become a world figure this may not continue in the future but as i said cuba's cuba will not remain what it was it will become something different we should not neglect cuba and we should use cuba to establish better relations with all of latin america now the question on whether this is end of ideology and uh, dominance of religion if if the question is end of marxist ideology i would say that it is the end of some things that were wrong in marxism not everything was wrong in marxism some things that were wrong it is the end of that and by no means is it the the clear victory of religion as such because there are many things that are also wrong in religion if anything has you know one has a victory in this it is i would say realism pragmatism and humanism the next question about uh, whether i could pinpoint one factor that has led to this i would say that uh, both you cuba and the united states realized united states more than cuba that this divorce has no basis because it is so close and there is no you know cute after the cold war there was absolutely no basis for prolonging this this uh, separation so realism has dawned in the united states best manifested by obama but also realism on the part of raul castro you know raul castro has has tried to correct some of the mistakes that were committed in the past but maybe they were necessary those days they are no longer relevant so he has come to accept that realism that it is good for cuba to have better relations with the united states is the third level of analysis dominant is the third level of analysis dominant but what you just said see of course individuals matter you know history is always you know there are objective factors but it is individual leaders who seize the opportunity and create breakthroughs and in this particular case the credit must bo go both to obama and raul castro dr pensi one one about gender <laughs> friends you know raul castro was uh, was questioned you know in what what would you say are the incomplete tasks of the cuban revolution his answers he said there are two areas where we need to do more one is that we should further improve race relations between blacks and whites they are much better than in the united states but it's not complete harmony he accepted that and number 2 he said that women should be empowered more women are already empowered in many ways but they need to be empowered more 
among doctors are there many women of course many many women but i must that you know cuba because of its economic hardships the economic hardships has impacted family life social life in some ways and one hopes that uh, they'll they'll address these problems dr pensey sir uh, let me compliment you on a very good talk uh, i was intrigued by um, one thing which came intermittently in your lecture and that is mistakes were committed now i am very curious to know which mistakes um, before the uh, end of the cold war and 25 years after that the mistakes which were corrected by now or maybe still remain uncorrected yes are the yes please so thank you so much for the for a wonderful talk i wanted to actually uh, i was student of me in economics at the university of mumbai i so i wanted to ask you uh, so we spoke a lot about investing in human capital but is it sustainable without the foreign aid like what was the fiscal situation like because thus whether it is a replicable model because with foreign aid for a country the size of cuba it can work out but if you go for one of the larger countries investment won't be sustainable right because investment in human capital is not so to have instant returns like it does have returns but sustained over a sustained period of time over a long run but what happens to your budget budgetary situation in those circumstances again ha huh. uh, dr bosley sir sir i am extremely thankful to you <coughs> for making us understand what cuba has gone through and uh, what cuba is now as a student of labor studies i wish to know your your insight what is the labor market arrangements and somewhere through your talk i was uh, uh, coming to understand that uh, uh, we are hoping for a much better cuba you also mentioned that uh, there's a lot of encouragement to the private enterprises do you feel somewhere that these encouragement to private enterprises somehow will disturb the kind of the earlier existing arrangement where the state intended to, to do so many uh, welfare uh, programs for the masses and from where did this army came basically for the revolution to remain sustained for a very long time from where did this strength came from were they not the masses maybe the agricultural workers the laborers and what would happen with a boom which you really see in the coming days where there would be an expansion of the the labor in the much in the unorganized or the creation of the industries where yes the same government would take a stand that we will observe them in these uh, uh, in the in the formal arrangements and create that kind of security so somewhere i feel uh, how these new arrangements are going to happen so maybe your reflection on that raj wadi uh the situation has changed in the latin america since uh, very 1998 onwards now how what is the process behind this change in latin america from full support to america almost full support to america to virtual isolation what is the process the, on the oncoming of uh, pink tide as, as we say from students uh, dr munde so have this initiative is uh, started in the early in your number of colonies will be taken in and in 2016 the pope may be there but obama may not be there so how much you are expecting in the future
future uh, successful data that this uh, initiative will uh, go on. Okay. <coughs> You know, your question about which mistakes, let's say before 1990 and after 1990. <clears throat> uh, you know, it is it is always wise, easy to be wise post facto. But when a country is, uh, is facing a very hurtful blockade, from a very hostile and very powerful neighbor, then you know we can't really judge them very harshly. They became dependent on the Soviet aid, and in the process, they adopted some of the Soviet models of uh, eco economy as well as governance. Subsequently, they have come to realize that these were not very helpful and they are beginning to change. To give an example, you know, the wages in, the, in, in Cuba were so depressed and in order to create a certain equality, doctors, you know, we, we, realized, we realized how much importance they gave to doctors. And doctors became, in some ways, ambassadors of Cuba around the world. But doctors were paid very little. Until a few years ago, the doctor's salary in Cuba was $20 a month. $20 is what? About 600, 700 rupees. Of course, you know, there were social benefits that were available to all. But, you know, it creates, you know, it creates a kind of a discontent. Not all complain, but some were feeling that if I go to the United States, I will be able to earn maybe $60,000 a year. So there was this kind of... And any society where this kind of discontent grows, it cannot remain stable. The other mistake, after 1990, is that they still remained a closed society with uh, many basic freedoms denied to its citizens. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, even today, internet, only 5 to 10 percent of the population has access to the internet. So, <coughs> Mark Frank, you know, this, this uh, Reuters correspondent that I met, he made a very interesting remark that Cuba was the first country, one of the first countries in the world to achieve 100% literacy. And perhaps it will be the last country in the world to achieve internet literacy. So these, they are now correcting these mistakes. Human capital is a myth, it's a myth that we need foreign aid to strengthen, to enrich human capital that it is unsustainable. Of course it is unsustainable if your economy doesn't grow. But primarily, it is not foreign aid that helps human capital to be developed. It is, it is the willpower, it is farsightedness, it is unity of the population. And Cuba is an example. I'm not saying that it is 100% sustainable because they were also finding it difficult to continue, you know, managing this uh, cradle-to-grave social security, so, which is why they started, you know, making these economic reforms. Hmm? But we should never think that we can become healthier, more educated when we have foreign aid. In fact, foreign aid creates dependency. Uh, your question, Professor, about labor market uh, situation. <coughs> You see, there are, there are pluses and minuses in any system. The pluses of whatever Cuba achieved is that they are a fairly egalitarian society. There is no, there is no overt poverty. No one is hungry in Cuba. There are no slums in Cuba. 
But if you see Cuba, I mean, you will you will wonder whether Cuba is still in uh, in some ways in the 60s or the 70s, hmm? because they do not have the money to modernize their nation. Hmm? I told you this old Havana, which is crumbling. They do not have the money to take care of their own whatever is their asset. Hmm? Similarly, they did not have money to pay their people better wages. Hmm? So, a kind of system that that uh, deteriorated work culture. People felt that we are secure. So, Sarkar to sab hamara kar legi. Hama subsidized food, subsidized accommodation, housing, etc., etc., education. But in the process, the, the Sarkar, even a Sarkar that is it's not an exploitative government, it's not a government of the rich there, but they did not have the money to sustain. So therefore, they have gone in for these economic reforms. And in the process, they will have to figure out how to take care of the of workers who will be employed in new enterprises, private enterprises or cooperatives. This is a, you know, humanity will continue to contend with new situations and new problems. There is never a solution that is for all time to come. Uh, now, Latin America, see Latin America has undergone a, an amazing transformation you know, in the 70s and the 80s, almost all Latin American countries were under some kind of dictatorship or the other. Either military dictatorship or civilian dictatorship. And all were in some way supporting the United States. They were dependent on the United States. And, the you know, United States wanted such dictatorships to be there. And whenever there was a democratic uh, change, the United States suppressed it. You know, we have seen what happened in Chile. The elected president of Chile, Allende, he was assassinated. So these are, but now, there is practically no country in Latin America which is under dictatorship. This is a big democratic transformation. They all have become aware of their sovereignty and more equal relationship between the United States and Latin America is now developing. If there are no questions, then I, I will request uh, Dr. Bunde to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, no, 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 you want to ask? No, no, there was a question he asked. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Question. Question. I, I did ask that when there will not be Pope, uh -huh. but there, uh, uh, there will be Pope, but there will not be Barack Obama. So. How this relation is going you to see, be? You see, this change is now not uh, for anyone to reverse. You know, even, even if there is Hillary Clinton tomorrow or some other president in the United States, they are not going to reverse this. Because it is in the United States' own interest to have better relations. Today, you know, so many, even the business community in the United States is looking for Cuba as a new investment destination. So. Even the business community is creating pressure on both Republicans and Democrats to have better relations with, with Cuba. Thank you, sir.